Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick Wallace. I'm not going to be before you long. Uh, it's been a very long day. It's been a long couple of weeks. Uh, but <clears throat> I'm here with you because once again I'm getting news of some horrible news uh, about violence in the community. Violence that I have repeatedly proven can be mitigated significantly by properly engaging these young boys long before they get to this point. Uh, Black Man Lead has been available for I don't know how long. It, it has worked tremendously with those that we've been able to uh, work with. I mean significant uh, success rate. Uh, the ability even in situations where uh, there are still problems to predict which kids are most likely to uh, commit an act of violence and work from a preventative measure even in that sense there's so much that can be done but we're, we, we, we're not getting the support we need uh, I don't know any other way to express it but there are some things we're going to have to take upon ourselves. There are some things that we're going to have to do in order to see a difference in our community. Uh, we should know by now we are not going to be able to depend on our government, our politicians, um, and any other large institutions because these institutions literally in one way or another benefit from uh, the destruction of our community, from, from us not being economically unified, from us not having a substantial number of men in the homes uh, per capita. Uh, and I can go on down the line of ways that we're failing and they are benefiting from it. So they are benefiting from it. They are not going to do anything to change it. Uh, the idea that we operate in a morally uh, superior society that will see the wrongs being committed and, and, and work to change those is, is absolutely absurd. We live in a morally bereft society that is about the acquisition and uh, securing of power and the use of that power to get more power, to get more money to be able to move and do as you please. And there's a certain group that holds the power right now. That group controls everything that moves along and everybody else is in pursuit of that power. We're being left in the dust because we won't, we won't, we won't unite, we won't come together, we won't form an allegiance. And this isn't about hate. This isn't about blaming anybody else. This is about the fact that we are literally becoming our worst enemy. We are sitting around and watching everything happen before us. And all we have become experts at is complaining. We have solutions in front of us. That is probably one of the greatest frustrations I have. If I had did all this work and I came up with zero and I'm going like, I don't know. I just said, I'm going to say, hey, maybe this is just what's supposed to happen. You know, but when working with people like Dr. Claude Anderson, and say what you want to, but Umar Johnson and uh, having studied Dr. Amos Wilson, uh, Dr. Khaled Muhammad, Dr. Naeem Akbar, and having uh, followed in the footsteps in research with Dr. Howard Stevenson and Dr. Joy DeGruy, and 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 I, and I go on with, with 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 the mounting amount of empirical evidence that shows there's a way, and yet we sit here and and and, and literally fester in failure, and watch generation after generation of our children fall by the wayside because we don't want to take action because those in a position to help don't feel the pain like those who need the help. That's a problem. That's a problem. That People ask me, well, what's the problem? Why can't we unite? Because the people who can help don't feel the same pain and discomfort as the people who need the help. Most of the people who can sit up and say, I'm going to help you fund black men lead are not in the community. Nine times out of 10, they're living at the very worst in a multicultural community where they
they are probably significantly the minority. And so their reality is different because their money has allowed them a, a sense of escape from the true reality of nature. And, and until something happens that disrupts that reality, they can't relate. But the problem is our blackness is universal and the hatred of who we are is universal and the suffering of our people is collective and until we get this it's always going to be a problem with really delivering the type of results that we are capable of really delivering i'm not talking about anything outside the confines of what's possible i'm talking about changing our thinking changing our approach changing the way we invest in our community, the way we invest in our people, the way we're able to project and see into the future what's possible for our youth, and then putting in them in the best position to win. That's what I'm talking about. We have to do better. Again, in the description box, is the information you need to support the work we're doing. As I said before, we're looking to go national, to create a national network where we're working with young boys and young girls, but we need to socialize them into a sense of self, a sense of identity that's connected and anchored in who they are and where they come from and not where they're currently at or been, uh, been through. And we need to give them a sense of purpose, a sense of self, a sense of uh, power and possibility. We need to get them to fall in love with themselves and see themselves for the unbelievably extraordinary people they are. This is what we need so terribly. And it's sitting right there. It's sitting right there and we're passing it by. And we're overlooking it and we're saying maybe the next person will give. Maybe the next person here, somebody's going to help, man. Oh, I hope somebody helps. I'm going to pray somebody helps. And you're sitting right there. You are the person. You're the person that needs to help. You are the person. It's time to stop passing the buck. I wonder if I would have passed the buck on the research. How long it would have took for somebody to come up and understand the depths of what's going on from a sense of epigenetics, from a sense of social discovery, from a sense of social learning theory, uh, the issues with academics that I've, I've covered, the, the, the sign, uh, sociological impact of serial force displacement, and so many other things that I've tackled, so many other things that I've come up with solutions for. What if I would have passed the book? What if I was to say, man, I'm eating. I'm eating, and, and these people, that, it, that 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 I I I, I want to speak out about are predominantly ones that's paying me for what I do. Do I want to disturb that? Do I want to mess that up? What if I was that person? How much of what it is? I'm not saying that I'm the only person that could have done it, but I'm saying I'm the person that did. And I didn't pass the buck. I didn't sit up and push it off on somebody else. I sit up and took the mantle that was passed by Dr. Naeem Akbar, that was passed by Dr. Amos Wilson, that was passed by Dr. Khaled Muhammad, that was passed uh, uh, by so many others. Uh, Dr. Francis Crest Welsing is the reason I am in psychology. 1985, Phil Donahue show. It's probably, what, seven, 16, 17 years old and her defending her crest theory of color confrontation. Uh, she would later uh, publish the ISIS papers seven years later. And I've never looked back. And hopefully I'll inspire somebody else to do the same thing, you know. You know, hopefully when I'm finished, I will have written a minimum of 50 books. I'm halfway there. But maybe I inspire someone else to write a hundred. To double down on the research. To take what I put on the table, break it down, 
and discover where I, I may have had some weaknesses or some misreads and misinterpretations and put it back together where it's even stronger and better. But for right now, it's on deck and it works. You are the person that can help. Yes, pray that other people give, but you are the person that can help. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. And I really and truly look forward to doing something spectacular uh, this year in helping my people. On that note, I'm out of here. Thanks.